I'm on a journey seeking healing for the relatives of my father's victims. I would never want anyone to go through the kind of death that my dad did to these women. And when I think about the family members, I think about their torment. I don't even know how the family members cope. He was a very evil, spiteful man who did one of the most heinous crimes there is. When my father is linked to Julie Winningham's murder, authorities finally have him in their sights. He knew that we were going to be watching him and that it's only a matter of time before we'd come out and arrest him. He knew that. Every place he went, he thought he saw a police car watching him or following him. But leaving police are closing in. On March 25th, 1995, my father calls the police and confesses to Julie Winningham's murder. We were able to fly down and take him into custody and then charge him with first degree murder of Julie Winningham. An officer comes to me at work and says, we have arrested Keith. And I said, really? For what? And he says, um, for murder. I was just paralyzed with pain. Because here, I had these children, and I had to tell them that their dad was a murderer. My brother said to my mom, what happened? Like, what? Tell us the details. And she wouldn't, she wouldn't say anything. She's like, "That's all I have to tell you." And she went up the stairs. There's not a manual to tell you. This is what you tell your kids. You know, this is how you work things out. My knees were starting to buckle, and all I knew to do was just go to my bed. And I could hear my sister in the background sobbing and crying. And then it hit me: it's possible. It's possible. I saw what he did to the cat. It's possible that my dad did the same thing to a woman. All I could do was just sob in my pillow, and then finally I fell asleep crying. My father begins telling the police about his five-year-long killing spree as the happy face killer. We had no idea there was any additional victims out there. We had no idea who they were. Keith told me about a body that he dumped in Nebraska along the freeway. This was an unidentified female that had never been found. That turned out to be Angela Sabriz from Seattle. It was a struggle. It was a struggle every day. I tried to keep the news from them. I, I banned all newspapers. I banned magazines. I found that the best resource was for me to go to the public library, and I would pull up the newspaper clippings. And that's when I found out that there was more than one murder. I thought maybe there's like limits to how far my dad could go. And he broke every limit that I thought was there. You understand the consequences of entering a guilty plea? Yes, I do. You know you have a right to remain silent. 40-year-old Keith Jesperson came to court today in Clark County to get something off his chest. Keith Jesperson pled guilty to take the death penalty off the books. For this reason, and for my own personal reasons, and to accept responsibility for the death of Julianne Winningham, I am pleading guilty. He never showed any emotion at all. No remorse. I stood toe to toe to him in court. She was my mom. Someone needed to be there. He deserves to fry, because not only has he killed six others, or seven, or eight, how many has been, who knows? This thing just gets worse and worse as it goes on. I think it needs to be put a stop to fry him and get it all over with. I wanted him to die, but now that I'm older, he'll go through more misery in the next 50 years that he's in prison. I don't believe he was wired wrong, born with a birth defect, none of that. He made a choice. He just liked to rush like somebody likes heroin. And unfortunately, my mom happened to be one of the rushes. My father continues with his confessions, saying he killed Tanya Bennett, not the two people who were convicted of the crime. I reached down and grabbed her around the neck. It was horrible to listen to someone say what they did to your sister. Laverne Pavlinak and John Sanofsky are released, and my father is sentenced to life in prison. 